Please join me in a salute to the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting for November 27th, 2017. Uh, first, we will have public comment. Anybody from the public wishing to speak? Yes, Mr. Preston. Good evening. Sorry about uh, my voice here a little bit. It's like an annual, really annual thing here. Um, I can always talk about flooding, and I can always, uh, and, I, and I just happened to see under the manager's report, Expedia named Hampton Beach as the number five of the 16 most tourist-friendly cities in the United States. Well, that's something that's a matter of opinion, but we're not, we're not a city. But sometimes I understand that you know, we have to pay like one, and I can feel the frustration, you know, with the board, with the state, on a lot of those issues, but what I'm actually here for is to see if we can be one of the most resident-friendly towns in the United States. Um, I, I'm not sure, and I realize we can't do, go back and forth, um, I'm not sure if the town lot in front of the police station is closed for a reason, but yesterday at noon the gates are closed front and rear, and that was at noon. At 5 o'clock they were still closed. There was one car inside and there was one tractor from a tractor trailer rig, just, just a tractor. Uh, today, I went by and there's just one tractor trailer on the very south side. And tonight, there's a, a, back to one car and a trailer, but the gates are locked. Excuse me. The gates aren't locked. The gates are closed. Completely closed. I know when I came in a couple months ago, I'm trying to be proactive. And I realized, you know, this is a busy time of year for everybody. And there's never a good time for, you know, when we're talking about seasons and off seasons and plowing or whatever. But... I did ask if there was a point person who to call when, when this happens. You know, I don't know if it's Diane or if it's the manager or if it's public works or whoever. But those gates should be open front and rear. And, and if the, you know, if the police say, you know, they need to close it for reason, great. If the fire chief says, you know, I understand that. If the guy plowing it needs to close it temporarily while he's plowing, that's, those are all three good reasons. But I see no reason why that place is you know, closed yesterday and today. I don't know if there is one. Um, I'd like to see those gates open all the time. Um, you know, we talk about the flooding. Nick, for people that don't know at home, and you got to, you know, repeat things over and over and over. You got the 10-foot ties, they, they say in the right Pierce report, that flooding is an issue anytime we're over 10. And I And I made the statement that that's, you know, 10% a year now, but it's actually, you know, it's it's actually more than that, but it's in the double digits. We're going to have six tides next week that are over 10 foot. So for those at home or anybody that doesn't know here, just get on Hampton Harbor Tides and look. Fortunately, when these tides hit, they're going to start Saturday. Fortunately, we're lucky these are all day tides. They're going to start at 9.30 on December, um, well, this, this Saturday. So that's December 2nd, I believe. Then we have Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. But the tides on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday are all 10.5, 10.7, 10.8, 10.6. I know you've allowed, you know, for people to park in that lot for flooding. But, you know, the gate's got to be open. It's a day tide, so we're lucky on that. When they happen in the middle of the night, it's a bigger problem because people forget. And then all of a sudden it's too late, you know. So I, I just like to, you know, let's let's get on top of this. And, and the other thing, which you know, I realize you're busy, got a lot of other things going on. And last week, Jim, you mentioned it that you were going to bring it up, and I realized you did the week before. And I don't know if you talked before the meeting about it, but um, I, I didn't see it come up. And another thing that I said was, there's no reason, and I think Rusty at one point agreed with me. There's no reason that our policy should make people be out of there at 7 in the morning. You know, he said it, it can be it can be noontime, whatever. But that's that's just a little more reasonable. But, you know, when you, when you read about this story about the 
tourist-friendly city. That's opinion. You know, I like to do facts, not alternative sets of facts. You know, I, I'm getting tired of the rigmarole. I appreciate your frustration with the state, but once upon a time, I was I can understand that, you know, you as officials have been attacked sometime from the private sector about some issues with the state. Once upon a time, I was attacked as a citizen by officials for going after the state. But we accomplished what we were trying to do. It took a long time, a lot longer than it should, but we're doing really good, and I would appreciate your attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you to the Anybody board. else, uh, public comment? Seeing none, we will go to announcements and community calendar. Uh, Regina? Just hope everyone had a happy Thanksgiving, and we have a famous uh, Hampton Christmas parade this Saturday. Rusty? Yeah, I was going to remind everybody of the parade. Starts at 1 o'clock at the Northampton town line, comes down through. Uh, I believe the town town is closing, the, the, closing the street about noontime, uh, maybe 12.30. Uh, there'll be music at Morelli Square starting about 12.30, so if people are downtown early and they want to hear some Christmas music, I know the, uh, I believe the chamber singers are there and a, and a couple other uh, groups. And don't forget the tree lighting on um, Friday night. Right. It originally looked like it was going to rain, but it looks like that, that's all going to pass early, and uh, that starts about 6 o'clock till about 8 o'clock, and uh, there's going to be refreshments down there. Uh, everybody be enjoying it. Uh, it's a it's a great time, great event, and reminder to the selectmen that they are still invited to march in the parade if they want to. So if they do, just kind of let me know if you're going to be there. Rick, yeah, are they going to have the sleigh ride this year that they the, always had? The hay ride. Hay ride. Yeah. I, but I believe it's with a tractor this year. With a tractor. Yes. Okay. So I hope everyone has a good time. There's lots going on. Phil? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have nothing. Uh, I would like to just reiterate what R Rusty said about the parade and the tree lighting. The tree lighting is really a, a, a nice community event. Uh, the last few years, there have been a lot of people there. It's really been crowded. It, it's been a really nice event. So please get out and support both the tree lighting and the parade. Okay, consent agenda. Veteran credits. Donation to Welfare Department from Hampton Free Medical Clinic for $9,077.52. Appointment, Hampton Beach Area Commission, Nancy Stiles. So moved. Second. All in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. <laughs> Appointments, Mary Louise Wolseley, uh, A, flooding issues. Good evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for allowing me to have an appointment with you. Um, I notice flooding is getting everybody's attention. Um, I noticed in the Hampton Union today there are pictures of the tides and, and uh, King Tide photo contest. Um, my concern, because I don't live in an immediate flooding area, is the drainage. And it looks like that task is going to fall on the shoulders of the Public Works Director. Um, Mr. Griffin can say what help the state is <clears throat> with the drainage on Route 1A before your house floats away. And uh, so I don't know what kind of coordination there might be between the state and the public works director. Um, I had suggested a couple of times when I was still sitting on the board a meeting with the planning board um, to get a feel for where the planning board is going with new developments and so forth, the proximity to wetlands, et cetera. So that might be something that you might want to at least discuss with them. And the river is flooding up as well. I'm sure that's accounting for a lot of the sand that you've been talking about. Uh, the higher the ocean goes, the higher the river's going to go, and you may end up by having issues with Hampton <coughs> Falls side of the river and the Hampton side of the river. Uh, not tomorrow, but in the coming years. Um, I've been thinking about 
the drainage problem and the uh, public works. And I think that there are some things that you need to take a look at and, and seriously consider. The managers being paid to provide professional guidance and support to your board to provide appropriate town services while controlling spending. But from my perspective, you're not listening to your manager. Last fall, almost every meeting, and I think even last Monday night, I heard Fred say, we're doing nothing but picking up trash. Okay, wait a minute. This is supposed to be about flooding, flooding. isn't it? Okay, well, okay because there's a lot about flooding I want to talk about tonight, and it's okay. not about trash. Okay. It's about flooding. Please stay in no, the flooding. No, I just, well, but this is, this is tied in with public works but and what has know to it be is. done. We had, a, we had a discussion Jim? on flooding, so if we could just stay to flooding, please. The problem goes with flooding and with the other undertakings that public works needs to focus on. We have flooding where, I at, where I'm at and it has nothing yes, to do with do. public works because it's state. It's the state. And this is not right. about uh, trash. But Stick I'm trying to, the... to... No, you're not. Wait a minute. Wait, let's not argue back and forth. Please continue and please contain it to flooding. Well, I've, I've touched on the flooding, which is part of the big problem. Um, the... We comply, if Fred agrees to this, we comply with the state requirement to provide a place for residents to dispose of waste. First, I want to talk about yes. flooding, yes. and I have plenty to say. Okay, when we're going to have to keep it to flooding. You keep going oh, back all right. to we do, trash excuse, and waste. We got to stay with flooding. No, it's, but you it's don't all, make the rules here. It's all, Rick, I'll. Well, mind. please do it. Because I am I'm... doing it. I am doing it. Stick, stick to flooding, or I'm going to have to ask you to stop. Please. What I'm trying to tell you is that the flooding issue is tied in with all of the concerns. It's not going to stop, and I'm not for... going to sit here and put up with this. Hey, hang on. In the public works department, you right. have. Do you have anything big... else to say about flooding? You... It's part but of the problem. Do you, do you have but any there's more, Excuse there's me. more Excuse than me. that. Anything specifically about flooding. If it's specifically about flooding, we will discuss it. We're not going to get into the, the public works department necessarily. We will deal with flooding. So please. All right, then let me ask you to put me on your agenda next Monday night for public works. I'll take because it under consideration. There are, because there are other problems. Okay. And you are losing So do you have anything else? Do you department? have anything else on flooding? It's part do of the... Do you have anything else on flooding? It's part of the overall go to the problem. board. Regina, do you have anything you want to talk about flooding? I have nothing at this time. Okay. Thank Rusty. You. Oh. Phil. Uh, I'm deferring to yeah. Selectman Griffin. Okay. Yeah, I definitely want to talk about flooding, but I think I'll wait until we talk about the Warren Articles, because it's to my... I'm of the opinion that the way the Warren Articles have been talked about is completely wrong. Okay. So, so we we'll have do... a lot to talk about okay. about flooding, but not about... Thank you very much for your concern. Uh, next appointment, Christy Pulliam, Finance Director, Monthly Financials. Good evening. Good evening. All right. You guys all should have received a week or so ago the financials for the end of October. I also ran a quick expense report for today that brought us basically through the end of November because um, we had a lot of holiday pay and a lot of payroll expenses last week and we're still right in about the same ballpark as what I'm going to report here. Um, but the November financials will be out as quickly as possible since we're coming towards the end of the year. Uh, the target for the end of October was 83.3%. When you review the attached revenue report, you can see the differences in revenue from 2016 to 2017. The 2017 revenue is slightly above target at 
and above the 2016 actuals for October. The month's total income was $701,063. Of that total, motor vehicles came in at $296,977, which is under the month's target by $1,631. The other major contributors to the month's total were interest on taxes at $10,035, Building permits at $21,582. The highway subsidy at $94,869. State water pollution control at $97,899. Departmental income at $53,927. Parking lots at $5,712. Sale of town property at $5,000. District court fines at $17,575, and the real estate trust at $98,216. On the expense side of things, you will find that we are under budget by $576,275, or 2.33%. In October of 2016, year-to-date expenses were $1,092,364 um, under budget that year. Let's see. Then this month, I'm just going to run through and tell you where every department stands, just like I did last year or last month. Uh, town manager section is at 83.09. Town clerk is at 79.3. The finance department is at 80.84. The tax collector is at 78.03 percent. Assessing is at 53.95 percent. The MIS is at 77.32 percent. Legal is at 140.57%. Planning is at 76.82%. Zoning is at 68.92%. Cemetery is at 81.26%. And Parking Administration is at 95.29%. Takes care of general government. The Police Department is at 80% when you include their open purchase orders. Fire Department is at 75.2% including open purchase orders. The building department is at 72.29%. Public works is at 82.1%, including open purchase orders. Welfare is at 61.63%. Parks and Recreation is at 82.8%. Library is at 86.94%. Conservation is at 77.81%. Um, the other funds besides the general fund, Fund 24, which is a recreation fund, has a balance of 153783 which includes the beach sticker donations of 19874 and scholarships of uh, $15,301 being awarded just this year. Fund 25, the Cable Committee, has a balance of 392272 Fund 26 is private detail, has a balance of 146,352. And Fund 27 EMS has a balance of 619,502. Some expenses that we know that are coming up for these funds, um, the board approved, I think it was a couple weeks back, uh, 37 or 38,000 going to the uh, Channel 13 at the school. So that still has to come out of um, Fund 25. Private detail, I believe they're still waiting for a cruiser to be delivered, which is coming from that fund and the EMS fund I think they just opened ambulance bids uh, a week or two but so a week or two ago um, so those are expenditures that will be coming up out of those funds the wastewater system development charge fees collected in 2017 total 114,768 with a balance in this account of 191,756 the board has approved a total of 48,722 expenditures, which will be expended from this fund. So that would bring the balance down to $143,034 in that fund. And that sums up the October financials. Regina, thank you. 
So I'm sorry, you just said for the <clears throat> public for the detail fund and the EMS fund, there is still. I believe that I believe that there. I had to check on the cruiser because I know there's a cruiser coming out of there or a portion of a cruiser, and I don't believe that that has been paid yet <clears throat> out of that fund prior to these financials. It may have been paid in November. And I know that the um, fire department just opened ambulance bids because I actually helped them when uh, Fred was at NHMA. So that was like, what, two weeks ago, a week ago? A week ago. A week ago. And so they just opened those bids. And those are usually almost, I can't remember what the bids were, but I think those usually run about 175000 to two hundred for the ambulances, somewhere in that ballpark. Yeah. So um, those are expenditures that will be coming from those funds in okay. the future. So, All right, great. No, thank you, Christy. Great report. Thanks. Rusty. Christian, just on the uh, the EMS fund. Yes. That's not actual money we have in. That's Absolutely not. And that's what I want people to know yeah. is that's all payables or all receivables that we could have coming in. That's what's been billed out. Right. Because we book, we do accrued accounting, so we book the revenue at the time of being invoiced. Right. So, so that all, we do not have $619,000 in cash sitting there. That is right. accurate. I just want to make sure people know that, that it's, yep. it's much less than that. Yep. So, yeah. Thank you. Good report. Mm -hmm. Rick? No, thank you. I you did a good job as always. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, got the uh, monthlies, and if I could just uh, stray just, just minutely, very quickly, um, and if you could get information on, we did a bond refinancing, and we're going to be discussing that a little bit later, and Rick's going to bring up some points. The fire substation is at 5.1%. You did a bunch of rebonding uh, and, and put a bunch together. Why wasn't that um, done as well? You couldn't do that? That one was that was project was started prior to me becoming the finance director. I was just here for the closing. I don't know why that i don't i think that bond was not in um being paid back at the time that we refinanced to be honest with you okay timing um, yeah, wise. yeah because it started in 213 it's 5.1 million dollars the interest rate is five points i know you rebonded that might be something we uh we could uh, have a project on and then uh without objection if you could rusty made a good point about uh, uh receivables that uh, are collectible. if uh you could get the information to the board on our welfare or liens if you could provide a synopsis of that, uh, that would be great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for the report. Uh, everything financially is in good shape right now, yeah. and that will be on the website, or it is on the website. Hopefully it's on the website. I All usually right. put those up at the same time that I email you. I will confirm, though, that okay. they're there. And people, when they're looking for that on the website, what do they go to? Go to Documents, and then go to the Finance Department, and then there's, uh, I think I have three different tabs under there. There's Monthly Reports, or Financials, I think it says, and then Audit, and a couple okay. other tabs. Right and all that information is there, so they can get all the information. They can see exactly where the money's being spent, where the money's coming in, and what yes. kind of shape we're in right now. Yes. Right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, yes. One more thing, oh, it's okay. if it's okay. <laughs> Fred is waving in front. I put into your guys' boxes today um, an engagement letter for services with Plodzik and Sanderson um, in response to requests made by the board to, um, I'll just read right from this letter here, to under the direction they will be available for, for consulting services that will include general consultation, evaluation of tax rate impact of various warrant articles, including impact on annual debt, service requirements, and projected impact on financial ratios for us. So I'm going to start working with Scott at Plodzik and Sanderson uh, next Monday, and hopefully we can wrap that up in just a few days' worth of work uh, with him. So. Fred has that letter um, to sign, and I believe it needs to be signed by the chair. So. Okay, so you need a motion and a vote on that. Yes? Yes. I would move that uh, the board approve uh, per the 27 November 2017 letter to Mr. Welch from Plaznick and Anderson, uh, subject to the comments by uh, Finance Director this evening. Second. All in favor? All opposed? It's unanimous. Anything else? I think that is all I have. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, town manager, oh, no, I'm sorry. November 13th, minutes. 2017 minutes. I'll move those. Second. All in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. Town manager's report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, 
Uh, folks should please note that there are only 16 days remaining if you wish to submit a petition to amend the zoning ordinance. The deadline for submission is December 13th, 2017. The submission of warrant articles to affect all other subjects must be submitted by January 9th, 2018, except for those articles if you wish to submit one. To consider push petitioning a bond article that must be submitted by January 5, 2018. And the reason for that is because there are certain public hearings required for that and notice requirements in order to meet the deadlines. Leaf collection continues. Uh, if you have uh, leaves that you have put out, uh, the, the actual collection is, is, is over with, but if you have leaves you've put out, please call the Public Works Department, as we had indicated last week, and they will come pick them up at the, at the curb by your property. Uh, work on the replacement of the sewer line on Lafayette Road has been closed for the winter season with work to resume in the spring as soon as the ground is workable. The Hampton tree lighting, which is important, will occur on Friday, December 1st at 6.30 p.m. at the gazebo in Morelli Square. Please be present if you can. The Christmas party, uh, Christmas, yeah, Christmas, it is a Christmas party. It's a Christmas parade, right, Santa? Yeah. It uh, starts at 1 p.m. to be a secret. On Saturday, December 2. Oh, everybody here is Santa. They're all on the board. You're all the, the, the community Santas. Good recovery. <laughs> on Saturday, December 2nd. I hope everybody will be there. Expedia has named Hampton Beach as the number five of 16 most uh, tourist-friendly cities in the United States. Mr. Chairman, we have a couple of other things. Uh, I just want everybody to know that the work on Ice Pond Dam has started. And they're up there trying to put everything together, and hopefully that will be done in short order. They should be out of there in a few days, and we will have a new dam at that location. Um, we do have a draft article that I gave to the board that you'll have to consider at some point to study the sewer enterprise fund. It's just a draft. It give you an idea of kind of the magnitude of where you might wish to go, and please advise me as to what you would like to have on that. I also have a motion for the board that we do this every year uh, that requires the board, to, the board of selectmen to vote for, to require the selectmen of the budget committee to have numerical tallies on all warrant articles. So I, I will leave that in your care and custody, sir. Um, bicentennial seawall project. Uh, latest information I have on that is that. Uh, it is back at the uh, engineers. Uh, I'm hopefully going to see it sometime within the next five or six days, but if I do, it's going to be too late to get the bids out and get them in by January 9th and researched into the board for, for approval. So I think that's going to be a, uh, a next year issue. In the meantime, we've already, I've already notified Public Works to make sure that everything is done to make sure that that facility operates correctly and is sturdy stay there, we'll need no repair during the course of the year. So we're working on that diligently. I do have a request that I received this afternoon from the Recreation Department. <coughs> the owners at 401, uh, the 401 Tavern on uh, Main Street on Lafayette Road uh, would like to um, borrow from the town and pay for it uh, with a donation to the Recreation Department. is the set of our portable bleachers so they can get people off the street during the parade. Uh, this weekend. And the board would need, I've told the, the rec department that the board would need to approve that. It will be set up, taken down in proper order, and, and restored. So if the board wishes to approve that, that's fine. Um, the planning board is going to hold a hearing. I received this today as well <clears throat> from the, uh, the town planner on December 6, 2017, at 7 p.m., the Slutman's meeting room, which is here, to amend Article 2, districts. 2.7, the professional office and residential district, which is the, part of the downtown area. This is going to be, this has already been posted. It should be advertised shortly, if, uh, if not already. Uh, if you're interested in things that will happen in that district, please be sure to attend the hearing. Let the, let the planning board members know how you feel about the proposals that they may have. Uh, I also talked to our deputy public works director today. We had a sinkhole form on Route 1. A uh, small one <clears throat> with a washout. Uh, they had repaired it this afternoon, but they're going to be over there. Uh, the contractor, uh, it's, it's in the water line that was constructed uh, next, to the, next to the drain line uh, down at Morelli Park. Um, they're going to be in there Tuesday night into Wednesday morning to dig that area out. 
uh, to refill it, to pack it, to see that it's taken care of, and to um, patch the area. Traffic will be disrupted, but there'll be no disruption of school traffic in the morning. That will, in fact, just go off the way it should. Uh, there's also a request from the planning board. Uh, this is something that town council had reviewed. Uh, it deals with, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> going to lose my voice here. Um, a proposition to a sewer easement deed for to be recorded, dealing with um, an amended sewer easement for lease of a portion of sewer easement deed. Uh, this deals with a cul-de-sac. It's it's a road that's just been finished. It's it's going to be up shortly for acceptance. Um, all I got to do is find the bloody name of the road. Um, it has been approved by town council, and uh, I believe it's. They never, they never put the name out in plain English where you can see it. <coughs> Robinson, uh, it was Robinson Drive. So it was renamed. Uh, but they, in order to record the deeds tomorrow, uh, the pro it's off of uh, 82 Woodland Road. In order to record the deeds tomorrow, this document needs to be signed by the Board of Selectmen because it, they, they had a new sewer easement on that particular property, and it was approved by the planning board, but this needs to be signed in order for the easement and everything to be properly recorded in the registry of deeds. Okay, we don't need to take a vote on this. Uh, you do need to take a vote on it. Okay. Absolutely, because you're recording an instrument. Okay. I'll make a motion that we okay. sign for the easement. Is that what we're doing? Yes. I'll second. All in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. Any other? Nope, I'm okay. finished. So that's, should that's we enough. do a motion on the motion to requ require Selectman and Budget Committee uh, numerical tally tallies of all Warren articles? Yes, that would require a motion to do that under the statute. Okay. So moved. Second. All in favor? No, I'm not exactly sure. What, what, what does that mean? That means that when you look at the Warren articles, say recommended by the Board of Selectmen 5-0, recommended by the Budget Committee 6-7, to seven, or whatever it happens to be for a numerical total. So we have a choice to do it? You have a choice by statute because the town meeting has not voted to do it. It's up to the Selectmen to, to either do this or not do it. In the last five years, you've been doing it. Mm -hmm. So we feel it's better to do it? I, that's that's your we'll choice. Find out I don't. We vote. Okay. <laughs> Any other discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Four to one. Uh, it carries. And the other one that we had to make a motion on was the use of the bleachers. Yes, I'll sir. make that motion. I'll second it. All in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. Okay. okay. Now questions for the town manager. As far as um, what? Shelly, Mr. Preston said about the lot. Is there a reason why we can't have it open all the time? I thought it was open. Okay. <laughs> I'm not aware of any of the fact that right. anybody's locked it up and closed it. Right. It should not be closed because we have people who use it uh, for parking for uh, high tides. Right, okay. Ten so, foot tides so and more. Make sure that it's open? Yeah, I have no idea why somebody locked it. Okay. okay. Great. But I'll Thanks. find out. Yes. Uh, Rusty? Yes. Uh, go along with the uh, tree lighting and, and stuff. Uh, I was asked if we could get permission. Um, the old salt is going to be at the tree lighting doing, uh, they're going to be roasting che chestnuts. And they want to have a, they have a raised fire pit with a screen cover on the top of it. But it will be on town property. So pending uh, fire, to, fire to prevention's approval. Right. Should we get permission from us, or do we just need a consensus? I, I would think that you would get permission from the board, so there'd be no question. I'll make a motion that we allow the old salt pending approval of the fire prevention officer to, to have a a open fire permit. Second. All in favor? It's unanimous. Chestnuts by the fire. Chestnuts roasting by the open fire. Anybody? Uh, Rick. For the town manager? Um, okay. So it's not, I'm in favor of the, you know, people using the lot too, but I thought we made it so that they were only supposed to use it during the high tide. <laughs> during high tides or during storms, mm -hmm. one of the two. So that should be open anytime there is a high tide, a tide above 10, 10 or above. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and it should be if we have a storm forecast. And there should be only people in there that have permits. Have permits for it. For so, the for parking for tides. Right. So anybody can park there during a storm. Yeah. So we generally leave it open. Uh, so what happens if some Joe Schmo that's not uh, just wants to park their car there for a month? What well, happens? If someone parks their car there, for, we make a notation. I certainly make a notation every time I go by who's there. Mm -hmm. uh, and if I see a car there repeatedly there, I will take the license plate number down. We'll refer it to the police department to find out who it is and contact the person and ask them to remove it. So because people, that's not fair to anybody else. Yeah, they're not supposed to be using it overnight. No, it's not, not for storage. No, it's, it's not for storage of your vehicle. Overnight parking. So it's for use like during the daytime. It's for use when a height, the tide is 10 or higher, which could be day or night. Okay, 10% of the time, like you said. Uh, well, it's, it's actually, I counted them. There are 49 instances during the calendar year where that, that, could, that could happen that are not storm-related. So you could have an un undetermined number because you've got storms involved. Uh, as far as any other p vehicle that be parked in there, only during a declared snow emergency. Mm -hmm. That's the only other time, unless the lot's open for paid use. Those, those are under your regulations. Mm -hmm. So I understand that. So <clears throat> I don't see how you can just, if you have a reason, you know, what, what it's supposed to be, do you have a sign up there that says that? No, they haven't put the sign up yet, but there will be one up there. I've told them to yeah. do that. So we make sure that people know exactly what's going on. It does help if you actually tell them what's occurring. Mm -hmm. So, And just on, if, if I may, on, on Rick's theme on this here, uh, our snow ban is all winter, right? It runs until the winter snow season is over. Right. Yep. So can people park there at night if instead of parking on the street, which I think they should be allowed to do, well, they can't park on the street at night anyhow between 1 and 7. Right. So they need to have some place to park, and I think that's what um, Mr. Preston is well, getting Well, if the at. board wants to change the regulation, then anybody can park there between 1 and 7. That's Whether the point what I'm making. We have these regulations. This is all not making sense. Right. I think that's what you were getting at. Yeah, that's why I wanted to. I'm not against it, but, I mean, why have the regulation and say that we're not supposed to do it, we're only supposed to do it during high tide when it can be all the time? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure the police have... Uh, ideas about we know what's happening in some of the other parking lots. Right. We don't want to have. Oh, yeah. We don't so, want to have. So I mean, there vehicles. are issues. I mean, we locked the Church Street parking lot simply because they were making drug deals there, mm -hmm. and the church informed us of that. So we had the lot cleaned up and we locked it permanently so that it cannot be used except when somebody's there. Okay, that would that was certainly a problem. Would you like a motion, Mr. Chairman? I, I would like a motion. Yes, I will make a motion that we allow parking in the Ashworth Ave parking lot during the 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 parking ban overnight. I will second. Okay. Okay, and that there, therefore the gates will be left open. Gates will be left open. However, what it is not. Is it's not for storage of vehicles being leave, left there. They have to move them out. And what times they can leave the car there from what to what overnight? 7 o'clock. They have to be out by when? They have to be out by uh, 11 o'clock in the morning. Okay, and what about uh, snow, if there's a, a snowstorm? We, the way we talked about it before and, and the way he had it, and I believe the public works director had, had agreed we were going to do odd and even or for, for, for Just changing. raising the issue. Yeah, and that's Don't that's even fine. expect an answer. That's fine. Okay. That, the motion, and it's been seconded in the discussion, and do we have a point man that if somebody needs to, who, who do they call? Charlie Preston? <laughs> <laughs> Volunteers? <laughs> so, the parking lots so, are under the control of the uh, recreation director. Okay. If somebody has a problem with somebody parking there, Get a hold of the public works director, and she'll get a hold of the police department. Uh, the recreation. There shouldn't be a, a car there three days in a row. Right. right. Okay. Right. So all in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. <laughs> all right. Uh, so anybody else? Uh, Phil, for the yes, sir. Real quickly, uh, I, I noticed the um, uh, email, Mr. Welch, on the bicentennial seawall project. Uh, an elaboration, please. The legal, if you can. If not, you can just shoot an email. Well, the. Um the project, as far as I'm concerned, is on hold for a year. Uh, the material's gone back to the engineer. 
and to get uh, some questions answered on the bid document. Uh, so therefore, it has not been issued as yet. I believe I thought it had been issued when I talked to you last meeting. I have since found out it has not been issued. Uh, by the time it comes back, it's going to be too late to get it issued, to advertise it for 30 days, and to get the bids back, open them, and <coughs> review them. It won't, we won't make the January 9 deadline. Yeah, and thank thank you for that. And uh, I hadn't seen, a, I don't know if other board members had seen a copy um, from legal um, about problems, but uh, could we, uh, the board, enjoy that privilege um, to get that? I didn't get it, so I don't know why you didn't get oh, it. Um, <laughs> yeah, my, I'm, I'm getting a little red-faced about it. I'm, I'm annoyed. It's a blight. Uh, it's a safety issue. And uh, I, uh, I'll go on later about it yeah. with you in, in uh, confidence. But, okay. Um, uh, again, we'll talk about that. Great work on the um, uh, uh, value enterprise system for the sewer system. Thank, thank you for bringing that forward and working with um, um, Director Pulliam on that. And uh, a great report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thanks. Chairman. Okay. And old business. And I just want to just very, very quickly end old business, say that we have uh, arrived at a contract with the town manager, <clears throat> that it has his, his contract has been exp extended until June 30th, 2021, and that a, a copy of the contract will be filed with the town clerk. Town clerk, and if the details will be there. Do we have any discussion on that? Yeah, I would just like to say, Mr. Chairman, uh, it's been a privilege working with you, Mr. Welch. Uh, Thank you, sir. And this is uh, very close to my sixth year, uh, and you have done a stellar, stellar, exceptional job. I would like to thank uh, Chairman Waddell for his stellar leadership in contract negotiations and uh, the great job that he's done in that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Welch. Okay, old business. <clears throat> anybody else? Uh, anybody else want to discuss anything on that or old business? Anybody want to bring something up? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I do. Uh, I had an opportunity to talk to uh, one of our board members today in a very excellent conversation about flooding, a very deep and binding subject for all of us. And uh, I think what we should do is in the warrant article as it stands right now, it, excludes, it, it carries everything from the town line in the harbor up to um, basically uh, Route 101. Okay. And then it covers everything from uh, Winnicott Road, almost Winnicott Road, to High Street, more or less, but not the marsh area that's behind uh, Route, uh, Route 1A. I think we should include that marsh area because uh, when I talked to uh, Rick today, those houses are all experiencing the same type of flooding from the back as the beach properties are. I was not fully aware of that. I know there was flooding from the front because of the state properties. But I was not aware of the fact that many of those houses have water problems in the back. I think we should include that area in the general study. It's probably going to come up with the same type of recommendations uh, because it's a common problem all the way up to High Street. So I would suggest that we, in fact, amend the warrant article to take that into consideration. Yes? Yeah, I would just like to say, I mean, there's, we can't do anything about flooding and remove the water from one area because it's only going to go to another area. It has to be a, a broader picture. And, um, <clears throat> you know, all through the years that I've been complaining about the water on Ocean Boulevard, I'm talking about rainwater, not about the, um, the uh, high tide. It's not that I don't know about the high tide problem. Just like every other, uh, yep. these king tides, it comes right up to my door. And um, but it doesn't, you know. It also goes out within the hour. And I think that's what the issue is down on those streets at Manchester and whatever. The water comes in and it goes out. There may be a slightly different um, problem up on High Street because that water comes and sits there for days. Mm -hmm. And that could be something different. Um, but, you know, and I know that Rusty knows this. There's, I can, and I, I don't really kind of want to name the people's houses, but to the north of Little Jack's, I know of four houses right off the top of my head that get water into their first levels every time there's a king tide. And... Um, you know, that's like basically probably 25%. And I'm sure if you went to the other 75%, there's a lot of issues. And everybody is, you know, just wondering what they what, what they could possibly do. 
Um, and everybody has a different issue. Um, with my property, we moved it 40 years ago up to the front, which was a conventional thing to do, and to have the building that I had and the plans at the time when it was owned by my parents, um, they could only go up 35 feet. So we couldn't build the building any higher than what it was because in order to just, to con you know, to not ask for, uh, you know, we wanted to go along with what the rules were of the town. Today I'm in a 50-foot zone, and I probably could raise my building. And I think that there's going to be many other people that are in these situations that probably need to raise their buildings. And uh, I think a bigger part of looking at all these problems is what can we do as a town? We have to look at is there a way we can give tax relief to people that want to put money into their property to make sure that th it stays as valuable as it is today or something like that. I'm not really sure what the answer is. But um, it's, you know, if there are places where the streets that the town has are, you know, are underwater, uh, can the streets be uh, raised? But, you know, basically people's houses, you're going to go all over Hampton and people's houses, there are many houses that need to be raised. So, you know, that's a whole other issue. Um, Mary Louise is right when she mentions about that it's something that the state has to, uh, we have to work with the town, the town has to work with the state, and that just isn't happening. I mean, this might be a project that the uh, Hampton Beach Area Commission should be doing is to look at um, why the, the road that everyone's planning, I almost fell off my seat when I asked the guy there the other night, uh, William Rose, well, what about the um, drains? There are no drains going into that road. That water that comes in on Ocean Boulevard from the ocean, if the ocean was to come over, that's a high point. The roads go down like this all the way to the marsh. So they don't have to have any drains for their roads. We have the drains that are uh, in between Winnicunnet Road and Boar's Head. There's 11 of them that don't work. There are others that don't work down on Ocean Boulevard to the north. I'm not, I'm not really sure at this point um, are what's happening with the drains about the rest of it. But how can there be no drains and how can there be no um, ecological study or anything? Um, I mean, this is a big problem. So we really do have to work probably with the state. Oh, yeah. And uh, if the state is going to have to put in more drains, maybe the town's going to have to put more drains. Are there drains on Manchester Street and uh, Norton or whatever the other one is there? My guess is there aren't any. Are there? There are a few. Not a many. few. But where do they drain to? They drain to the, the, to the marsh. They drain to the marsh. They do. And during a high tide, we know that they're not going to work either. Well... There's a there's a gate on each of the drain pipes that drains out to, or all almost all the drain pipes that drain out to the marsh that close automatically when the water level comes up to keep water from going in through them and flooding further up the street. Even in the older drains. Even in the older drains, we we've done a number of them. There are some the state will not give us permits to do. Mm -hmm. It's just like the state told us they will not give us new permits uh, f when they rebuild Route One A. Uh, that supposedly, I've been told, there are going to be drain systems put in that will be connected to our drain systems. But they will not, because our systems are already sized for the load they take, uh, they will not put valves at the end of those systems, and they, we will not be allowed to put larger systems in to accommodate the flow. Just so the way the state's ruled. Perhaps this is a good time when we're talking about the uh, wastewater treatment center, you know, and it all kind of goes together. It does. But this is a bigger issue, so it should be an issue that's all of Hampton. Yeah. You can't pump water from one spot and not expect it to go somewhere else, and pretty much that's what's happened. There's been added construction all over the marsh for all these years. Then you add that to global warming, and it, you know, it's a well, not got, a good situation. You've got the double whammy because now the the uh, Army Corps of Engineers is is uh, building a seawall behind the properties in Salisbury causing additional displacement, which is going to come over here and raise the water levels here. Yeah. Water's got to go someplace. And then I don't know, and I couldn't tell you for sure, but, I mean, I raised the question here one night, you know, is there, because of the the uh, harbor is so clogged up, is that displacing water also? I yes, mean, it is. So there's a lot of issues here, but it's not just that one area around Manchester Street and the one area around High Street. It's all of it.
So what do you what do you uh, are you making a motion to expand that Warren article or what? Are well, we just, yeah, okay, we have yes. to reword it, make sure it's yeah. right. Because we'll reword that, we'll bring it back to the board for your review, okay, and and consideration, and uh, because right now it, it it has the West Side streets at the beach, off of Ashworth Avenue, it has the streets off of um, Brown Avenue. And off the glade path and, and, and so forth. All that, that area all the way over to 101, but that's where it stops. And it doesn't start again until you get up near High Street and the area around Meadow Pond and Kings Highway. And what Rick is simply saying is there's a big area in between. We need to consider that in this, this application as well. Mm -hmm. Because what we're looking for here is an ear engineering recommendation as to what the things are we could do to help solve the problems. And when before December 18th, hopefully we'll have something to discuss about this because I'll bring this up at the Hampton Area Commission that this is something that we should all be working on. This Definitely. is a big problem. No question about that. Before it's be. decided, whatever happens to that road, they got to do something about the drainage. Right. I agree. Okay, so we, we will we, draft something. We'll okay, bring we'll it. To, bring we'll have it, it in your mailboxes okay. probably in the next couple of days, and uh, you can take it up at your next meeting after you've had a chance to review it. Okay. Anything else under old business? Yeah. Yep. Uh, no, go ahead. I, I wanted to stay on this issue. Are you on this no, issue? No, no, not this yeah. issue. And I just wanted to say that uh, um, Rick, Rick brings up excellent points, most excellent points uh, this evening. And it's not just something that's uh, germane to the beach. And I will say from the congregational church, uh, is it wraps around Winnicott Road, uh, that used to be part of the Toppen Farm. And there's uh, a board member that sits on that property. And uh, I'm very sympathetic to the people down at Gentian and people in Green Street and uh, people on those lots there. And uh, I won't bring the issue up while I'm sitting as a selectman, but uh, you go to Ross Colony Courts and people are fully utilizing their property. You go down the street and people are fully utilizing their property, as most everybody here is. And there are five or six lots there, what has now become wetlands. And this is from the exact same phenomena of planning board uh, um, excess and overdevelopment and people's properties have been taken. And it is at a considerable value. And it, Rick, Rick mentions it at the beach, but it's not just the beach and it's right across the street and the town is complicit in that. And uh, we'll, we'll expand that scope further. But when people uh, have takings by virtue of planning board excess and by virtue of uh, dumping sewer and using other people's property, uh, to dump your water, as you say, it has to go somewhere. Um, that's that day of reckoning uh, is coming, and, and it's not just at the beach. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Regina. Yes, mine is uh, not on the topic, but it's on the rooms and meals letter that the town manager's office sent out. <clears throat> I don't know about a month or so ago. Yes. Um, I just wanted to follow up. I actually uh, met with the town manager assistant this morning, who's been handling all of the incoming letters. And we've received roughly, based on the list that we received from the state, which I think was just over 300 right. businesses that are, whether they're restaurants, hotels, it was a little over 300. We've received, as of today, 71, which is about 24% of the people in town that we have that pay this rooms and meals tax. And out of that 71, about 24%, it's a little over $2, $2 million dollars. And this year from the state, we are receiving 780000 Now, the state for fiscal year 2017 received a total net after debt they had to pay off of $313 million. And they voted for the next, the two bienniums, which are 18 and 19, I believe, or 17 and 18, to give back to the cities and towns $68 million total for the whole state. So, so far, I just want to point out, 24%, we are taking letters whenever business owners can get along around to doing it, ignore the deadline. If the Christina receives a letter, she will process it. 24% of the lists that we receive from the state have come back to us. It's over $2 million, <laughs> and it's, um, we get 780000 So I don't know if you can put that into perspective, but... That's just 24 percent, and we're already over two million, and we're budgeted to get about 778 thousand back this year. So I just wanted to encourage anyone if they haven't got around to do it and they are willing to do it, please do it and submit it back to the town manager's office. Thank you. One other quick thing. Yep. 
we we talked last week about the the ladder truck. Have you have you talked to the fire chief yet about? I did talk to him briefly. Uh, we haven't come to any conclusions as of yet, but we need to get that done. There's no question about the ladder truck. We need to have that fixed. Uh, it's our intention to come back with a list to the board. Well, we talked about the manpower. That was. Well, I've asked him about that. He's going to work on that. Okay. Uh, and, and he has been active in that area uh, with a number of federal grants and state grants and so forth. So he's working on that. Uh, he's also working on getting the ladder truck repaired. And one of the things that we want to do is at the end of this coming month, we want to bring back a list of items to the board that need to be, shall we ta say, taken care of as deficiencies in departments. And if there are funds available in the budget at the end of the at the end of the year, as opposed to putting warrant articles in, we need to fix those items now. Okay. So we will have both those lists for you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, new business. We have waivers for purchasing policy and purchasing procedures, section 718-5. Period one policy waves and 718 <coughs> 16 single source police firing range to MT2. Mr. Sullivan. Good evening. Um, <coughs> excuse me. You've had all the materials before you. I'll just give you a brief overview of what brings me back today. Is, as you recall, earlier in the year, the board directed that we research this project and come back to you with it. Essentially, for everyone else, it's the remediation or removal of the metals, mostly lead, that's been in the police firing range for many, many years. Um, and it's never been cleaned up. So it's it's a significant project that we feel needs to be done. Um, we have done, based on the board's direction earlier in the year, very substantial research on this. <coughs> Pardon me. The legal department spent a substantial amount of time working with, you know, subject matter experts to make sure that we were okay to do what we were doing, um, and we are. In that research, I spent a lot of time looking at who are vendors, uh, what other ranges do, where has it been? And over and over, we came back to this company, MT2, um, utilizing the EPA's best management practices, the National Shooting Foundation's best management practices. There's a series of vendors that can do this type of work. But over and over, we came back to MT2, who's out of Colorado, as sort of the leader in the industry. The key issue here is, you know, cleaning it up is, is not extremely complicated. It's the appropriate uh, collection uh, and proper disposal of that where communities can get in trouble if you don't do it right. So going with a reputable company is vital. The other thing that MT2 does is they are the only company in the field that can treat the area with this. Essentially, it's a, a bonding agent that they, when they take all your materials out, they, they excavate out all of the lead. Your concern is that as the rain goes down over those berms that that lead can move around and migrate. They have a proprietary uh, treatment that they utilize that bonds, put it in the soils, and it bonds any of that movement in the future. So it'll help mitigate it. Uh, we believe that's a good thing. You see before you the proposal uh, from MT2. Um, I, we also made a visit. Chief and I were able to visit a site that they were cleaning up here in New Hampshire, um, a private range. We're very impressed. We met with the uh, the project manager for about half an hour, discussed the process, how it works. You know, they hire local you know contractors, uh, tools to do their work locally. Their crew comes in from out of state. Um, very impressed with their organization. So, why is this a sole source? It's a sole source because of that proprietary eco bonding. Um, again, we've vetted this through legal, um, and it sounds like that for us. That's the best thing. We want to see that this project is done properly, quickly and done by a qualified vendor. So as a result, I'm here before you to ask for your uh, authorization to approve us entering into a contract with NT2 to accomplish this work. Uh, we will cut the PO out of this year's budget. Um, as you see, the maximum charge will be $36,000. Um, there will be some um, lessening of that number depending on the value <coughs> of the metals that are removed. We obviously don't know the exact value. It's estimated to be anywhere from 1,800 to 3,600 off of that number, uh, but we'll know that at the end of the project based on what they mine out of there. We've tried to make some estimates ourselves of how many rounds we think are in there over the years, and you know our head spins a little bit based on the number you know, over. It's close to 40 years of active shooting in there. Um, what's good to the project, uh, we'll schedule a time so it will not impact the training, um, and we'll be able to make some of the improvements there that we need to do and clean up the area. Happy to answer any questions. Regina? So 
40 years of shooting and the, how long will it take them to do it? A couple, three days. So what they've, what the, talking to the project manager was very interesting is what they, they mine out about three feet or so based on the berm size. That's their experience is how far the projectiles travel through that they get trapped in the sand. It's really not much deeper than that. Um, you know, ours, we, we've, we're kind of surprised doing some research on the construction of the range. Uh, there are some things in that berm underneath there that I think are surprising. Hopefully we won't get to those, but uh, we talked to some folks who were uh, on the PD at the time the range was constructed in the 70s, and, you know, there's a report of a boat being underneath there someplace. So uh, I, hopefully we'll, we'll excavate out what we need to without dealing with that and then restore the berm um, deeper, stronger, and better than it is currently. Oh, great. Thank you. I think it's long overdue. I think uh, they've been, they've uh, they've been shooting down there on borrowed time. I think uh, it's time we clean that area up. It's right next to the marsh, and I think that's uh, uh, as I said, long overdue. I think proactive is a very very good thing for us. Absolutely. Yeah, I totally agree that it's overdue. Thank you, Bill. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks for the great work on it. A couple of quick questions, please. Yes, uh, on the website now, have researched it today. Uh, an extraordinary company that you've contracted with. Uh, they do all of the uh, law enforcement, military, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the contract uh, states um, they're going to remove three to six tons of lead. That's great. There's different options that are in here. Um, the configuration of the range in terms of uh, setting that back up. Uh, are you satisfied? You were uh, a police officer for a while in town, Chief, um, that uh, we don't need any reconstruction, um, rehabilitation. Is it the, uh, the best uh, and optimal use now, the way that's constructed? Are you going to put it right back up? Have you given thought to that? We have, and I will stay in my lane on this. I work with uh, the Chief and the Deputy currently to be sure it meets their needs. What we intend to do is uh, enhance the side berms. Um, the, the primary berm is sufficient when we restore its depth. Um, the height is sufficient by best management practices at 20 feet, but we'll ensure that that's appropriate. But we do like the idea of extending it back on the footprint, but extending the sides back deeper to make it, to make it safer. Got it. Uh, thank you. Uh, they have uh, two options uh, on page two they talk about, and we can talk about that in a second. Um, They've got an optional environmental uh, stewardship stewardship plan. Uh, we're talking tons and tons of lead. We're talking the police department plans to use this uh, uh, on and into eternity, perhaps. Uh, it's an existing range. This is a great remediation. Um, they have uh, an option to uh, provide that environmental stewardship program for $6,500 a year. Uh, at first blush, I think that's a very good investment. We've got uh, uh, civilian uh, quarters right near there. We do have the ocean. It is a marsh. It is wetlands. It is lead. It is a deadly uh, chemical uh, or element, and I would, I would like to incorporate that. Um, so if you can speak to that in a sure. second. Um, and then it's, uh, it's got renewals. Uh, to speak to, please, the uh, uh, continuing relationship with these folks. We've seen what's gone over at uh, the Hampton Rod and Gun Club. They've had challenges. We've seen what's going on with our own water. Uh, I think uh, we should set the standard here when we're engaging in that, um, uh, that, that uh, capability. So if you could speak to that ongoing relationship, the plus up with the option you didn't choose for 6,500 and uh, discuss that longer term relationship with them that they uh, maintain and help the town of Hampton be good environmental stewards with that, uh, yes, that uh, threat. Thank you. So the reason we chose not to do that uh, environmental <clears throat> stewardship plan is our intention is to utilize the EPA's best management practice for outdoor ranges. And it's adoption of essentially every five years we're going to have this type of project again. Um, that's why the plan, we pl what, what we recommend, we've, we've purchased materials to give to our PD range experts to develop that plan for us. We think it more than sufficiently meets the needs without paying that 65. I think that, you know, in discussions with the folks from the company, we feel pretty comfortable about that. And the best management practices, it's going to be an evolving issue. There's some other 
probable changes we'll need to make up there over the years, and we'll be back on those issues. But I think we can handle these in-house without having to pay them the 6500 to deal with that plan. As far as the ongoing relationship, BMP say we're going to do this remediation every five years. So we will have an ongoing relationship with, if not this company, another one as well. Got it. I don't have any questions. That it was really great work, and that was a quick fix that you provided. Great solution, great leadership. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a question. Yes, sir. What's the cost to operate a range per year? Approximately, do you know? I mean, what, what's the cost of ammunition? What's to operate our range? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, that's a huge question, depending on the type of range and what it is. But we are strictly a law enforcement range here, um, and we invest heavily in our training. Um, I, again, I. I'm going back to when I, I was chief off the top of my head, um, we would spend, you get training dollars and you have ammunition costs. Every year we probably spend somewhere between twenty and 35000 on the various projectile ammunitions that are utilized, and they shoot optimally four times, usually it's three times per year, doing some day shooting, night shooting, is new officer training, and then there's the in-service training. So to give you a number off the top of my head, I, I, I'd hate to throw a dart ball without pulling it for you, but it's a substantial investment, and it's absolutely worth every penny as far as, as, far as I would recommend. With, with new technology and stuff, there are a lot of companies that are companies out there doing a use of force simulation, which doesn't use live ammunition. Has, has anybody we absolutely do that. Um, what you're talking about is called simunitions, um, and essentially it's... Um, our, our, our folks, frankly, are the tra some of the best trainers in the state. We go up our firearms instructors and, and use of force instructors. So it, the question was the range is what I was staying on. But yeah. the, t the town and police department has a robust use of force training program. And involved in that is decision making, uh, utilizing simunitions, utilizing, you know, weapons transition based on scenario-based training. Uh, they have a very, very good program built down there. Hampton has always been a leader in their firearms and use of force, and I think they continue to do that now. So all of that's involved, Mr. Chairman. Super. Motion? I'll make a motion that we uh, sidestep the uh, bidding process and avoid and award the amount of 36000 to MT2 um, as a single source provider for the fire range. Okay, how about if we change that to give a waiver rather than sidestep? Well, all right, that's <laughs> I was going to mention the same thing. Well, yeah. Give okay. a waiver. If we would grant the waiver. <laughs> grant the waiver, yeah, the there you go. Under the purchasing policy and procedures. There you go. Okay, that sounds better. Very I'll good. second. Okay, all in favor? Thank you Both very much. unanimous. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. I wanted to bring up one thing while um, the deputy town manager was here. Uh, un also under new business or old business. Um, wasn't there another person, I'm not sure if they were killed, but shot uh, in a hunt, you know, hunting accident on property, you know, like what we're talking about for uh, town forest. Town the forest. town forest. But I, you know, again, not in our area, but my understanding, I remember reading the news that there was uh, somebody injured. One was an, I, I believe, a negligent discharge that, that shot someone in the foot, and another one was of a, a target identification issue, knowing, yeah, knowing what you shoot people at. people shot, and they yeah. didn't know what they were yeah. shooting at. Exactly. Which seems to be the problem that we keep discussing about yep. over there off of uh, Today we, we circulated some information that will be coming your way that legal's looking at. There was an article in the uh, union leader yesterday, or, yeah, I think it was yesterday that I saw, uh, that, you know, is, is an issue that's, something we have to research further on that and give some more information to you before you make a final decision uh, with regard to whether or not we have the authority to restrict um, this activity. There's a, you know, an article that discussed other towns that have done it, and some believe it's in conflict with a state RSA. Um, so we're researching that for you so you have more information. Yeah, because this is a New Hampshire man shot dead accidentally during target practice. <clears throat> and then there was the other one that was misidentified, and that was only in Brentwood. I believe there was also yeah. someone shot in the foot based on a, so a, that's a negligent three. discharge. Yeah. yeah, That was on this morning. Yeah. 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 Any other? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, no, thanks. I want to make a motion to go into non-public under RSA 91 colon A-3.
uh, the dismissal, promotion, or compensation of any public employee, 91-A, colon, 3, uh, 2B, and 91-A, colon, 3, 2C. Second. All right, we'll have a roll call. Regina, Aye. Rusty, Phil, Aye. and Rick. Aye. 